Hello everyone, welcome to Nursing Guru, myself Dr. Lata, homeopathic doctor. Today we are dealing with a beautiful topic that is musculoskeletal system. Let's get started. Have you ever wondered today day to day activities we flex and we walk too much and doctors suggest to walk and flex us right for the healthy life. Have you ever wondered how does it gonna happen what is helping us in our body to do so. Yes today I will explain to you in detail everything about it that is nothing but musculoskeletal system. Anybody knows what is musculoskeletal system. Yes, everyone will be knowing as the word indicates it is muscle and the skeleton which forms a complex system and called musculoskeletal system. It includes mainly two parts. One is muscle and the one is the skeletal system. Startly, we will go with the skeletal system. What is the skeletal system? It is nothing but as the word is skeletal, right? That is nothing but the bone which includes it. So what are these bones? We will see the definition. What is the definition of the bone? This is a calcified connective tissue. So they might ask you in the MCQ question what are these bones made of you can tell it is a connective tissue how it is formed right that is formed from connective tissue that stores calcium and phosphorus these are the two main elements you should mention right calcium and the phosphorus coming to the total number of bones present in our body there are totally 206 bones available or present in our body so classification of the bones bones are classified into or skeletal system is classified into two major part that is axial skeleton and the appendicular skeleton axial skeleton are the one which are placed the central axis of the body you know right body is divided into two parts the central axis and the appendicular or peripheral axis which are placed away from the body so axial skeleton are the one which are placed central axis of the body these includes 80 total bones so now axial skeleton includes mainly skull, vertebral column, ribs and sternum. So coming to the movements of the axial skeletal system, there are four main movements that can do that is flexion, extension, lateral flexion and rotation. So I will explain in detail what are this. Flexion is the movement that decreases the angle between the two joints and extension is the one which increases the angle between the two joints. Lateral flexion is moving the head or the part towards the lateral axis and rotation as the word indicates it is a complete rotation of the part. So I will explain in picturetically. So what is flexion? So flexion is when you bend forward that is flexion, when you extend forward that is called extension and the lat lateral flexion and rotation. These are the movements that performed by axial skeleton. Now coming to the appendicular skeleton, these are the skeleton or the bony parts which are placed peripheral to the body parts and connected to the central or axial skeleton helps in interaction with the environment. These includes mainly shoulder girdle, pelvic girdle, upper extremities and the lower extremities. This mainly includes 126 bones totally. I am telling about only appendicular skeleton. Fine. Now coming to the movements, movement of the appendicular skeleton. What does all this? Including with the axial skeleton, the function what does it do? The same thing it will also do. Including with that, it will do some extra work because it is placed extremely right. Now movements of the appendicular skeleton, those includes flexion, extension, abduction, adduction and circumduction. As I told, flexion and extension are the increase and decrease in the angle between the bony parts. Now coming to the new terms that is abduction, adduction and circumduction. Abduction is the moving the body parts away from the central axis. Adduction is the moving the body parts towards the central axis and circumduction as the word indicates circle making as making the body parts in a circle that is moving the body parts in a circle way that is circumduction. Now coming to the functions of the bone those includes movements, support, protection, mineral storage and blood cell formation. How does it support and protect the waters and how does it protect? It mainly supports and protect the internal organs of the body and peripheral or adjacent organs of the body. Mineral storage. As I told in earlier, the main two minerals which are stored in the bones are calcium and phosphorus. Movements. It helps in the various movements like I told earlier, flexion, extension, everything it does. It helps in that. Lastly, blood cell formation. The main site for red blood cell 
is the bone marrow tissue or cell now coming to the joints well come firstly we'll deal with the definition of the joint joints are the distributing and absorbing forces that are generated during the physical activity of the body and protects the body and body parts from the external damage in simple way joints are nothing but when two one or two bones join they form the joint with uh, the help of tendon muscle ligament everything now coming to the type of the joints there are mainly three categories or the three types of the joints placed in our body one is fibrous joint cartilaginous joint and synovial joint as the word indicates fibrous joint nothing but the made of fibrous tissue and cartilaginous joint cartilaginous joints are the joints that are made from cartilaginous tissue thirdly synovial joints synovial joints are the one where the synovial membrane will be present in between the two bones and that helps in the movement of the body those the synovial joint again classified into many categories those includes hinge joint pivot joint ball and socket saddle joint condyle joint movements of the joints movements of the joints includes flexion extension abduction adduction rotation circumduction plantar flexion dorsiflexion pronation supination now we will deal in detail with this what is flexion extension abduction adduction these are the same thing which i told previously now coming to the new one that is supination pronation dorsiflexion plantar flexion what is supination supination is nothing but facing the palm above that pronation is nothing but facing the palm below dorsiflexion is a type of movement where your lower limb move towards upwards towards your chin like this okay when the uh, opposite of that is plantar flexion think that this is your foot when you move your foot like this that is when you place your foot on the flat surface and you move like this this is called plantar flexion now coming to the bone fracture what is bone fracture bone fracture is nothing but a proliferative process whenever the bone is fractured from the external or other means what are the process it includes or mechanism it includes now we'll see steps in the bone fracture healing the main four steps are hematoma formation fibrocartilaginous callus formation bony callus formation and lastly bone remodeling the firstly hematoma formation what is this hematoma formation hematoma as the word includes whenever the fracture is appeared from the external means or internal means the bone is fractured along with that blood vessels are also injured when the blood vessels are injured there is a formation of hematoma that is blood collection mainly here blood will up, uh, accumulate or collect next one is fibrocartilaginous callus formation as the word indicates this mainly collection of fibers and cartilaginous tissue and form a callus callus is nothing but the soft part soft tissue third one is bony callus formation in this third step the fibrocartilaginous callus undergo proliferation and turns into immature bony formation that is called bony callus formation final step is bone remodeling also called as couple remodeling where immature bony callus changed or replaced into complete compact bone it takes mainly 18 days to months or a year now we are done with the bony or skeleton part of the system now we'll come to the muscle part of the system muscle is a kind of tissue that helps in the bone for the movement the main muscle which helps for this movement is called skeletal muscle now what is the definition of skeletal muscle the definition comes here it is a type of striated muscle that helps in the movement of the body it takes helps of both tendon and ligaments along with this it helps in the movement of the body now coming to the properties of the skeletal muscle the skeletal muscle properties includes excitability contractibility extensibility elasticity strength endurance and adaptability coming to the mechanism of skeletal muscles the mechanism includes only action potential acetylcholine sarcolemma depolarization calcium ion formation troponin tropomyosin complex formation cross bridging sarcomere shortening and relaxation now coming to the end part that is pathological part of the musculoskeletal system what are the diseases or the infection it includes in the musculoskeletal system this includes arthritis bursitis tendinitis gout dislocation 
hypermobility and fracture these are the pathological condition that includes in the musculoskeletal system so finally we are done with a beautiful topic of mine that is musculoskeletal system hope everyone liked my video and it will be helpful for your preparation of your exams and your day to day activities if you have any doubt please comment below thank you for everyone for watching my video thank you